When was the last time that you thought about rewarding yourself? We oftentimes think about rewarding good behavior for other people. Great job, well done, um, fabulous job. How often do we really do that for ourselves? Usually the inner dialogue that we have with ourselves is pretty negative. Why did I do that? That was stupid. I should have said something sooner. Or that's an ugly painting. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how rewarding yourself can lead to stronger patterns and habits and developing the daily painting habit. Hi, I'm Mary Gilkerson and welcome to my studio. So in the episodes previous, we've been talking about developing the habit loop, about ways that you can increase the likelihood of developing that daily painting habit. Remember that the loop consists of having reminders or cues, things like playing certain music, eating certain food, walking into a different space, that lead to certain behaviors or actions so the, the routine begins to develop. The routine is the action that follows on the cue. And then those routines build and layer on top of each other to form a habit. And you get positive feedback for, from forming that habit. And that becomes a reward. So it's reminder of cue, routine, and reward. When you have those positive experiences, that creates a positive feedback loop and it continues to build on itself, really more like a spiral than a loop. So that positive feedback loop is really, really, really important. So rewards don't mean you're gonna give yourself $10 when you finish a painting challenge. Rewards mean that you think about the actual benefits of completing that consistent action. So. There, here's some examples of um, rewards that you might want to think about using. Um, buying a tube of paint that you've been lusting over but you just really couldn't justify purchasing. Getting a new knife that's going to make it easier to do the paintings. So those are rewards that intrinsically reinforce the experience. There's also the reward of having done something consistently over time. Rewards are powerful. They satisfy an inner craving. And so we can build on that to increase the likelihood we'll keep doing those routines that we want to perform. One of the simplest ways to do that is actually one of the easiest. It doesn't cost anything. Remember I said we're really used to talking to ourselves in a very different way than we talk to other people. So what would happen if you had a dialogue with yourself that matched what you would have with your accountability partner, with your best friend, with the painter sitting next to you. Think about being as encouraging verbally to yourself as you would be to others. It sounds somewhat trite, but it really does work. Our psyche, our mammalian and lizard brain respond to being stroked just like anybody else does. So think about when you finish the practice for the day, telling yourself, good job, well done, I did it. Kind of doing a mental um, uh, success lap around the track. So give yourself some verbal rewards. We don't do that very often. We're highly, highly critical. And over again, over again in the past four days, I've seen people doing that to themselves in the Facebook group as they post their paintings. I didn't get as much done today as I wanted to, or this is not very good, or it's not doing what I want it to do. And instead of starting with a positive feedback loop, they're starting with a negative feedback loop. Well, what happens when you do that is it keeps building on itself and it becomes harder and harder to take that consistent action and to continue that daily practice. So instead, try starting off with the positive. That's why we have the critique sandwich when we critique in the group and in my courses. You have to start with two to three things that are working well, talk about what can be improved on, and then finish with what's something else that's working well. Because our brains require positive stroking. Simply telling yourself everything you're doing wrong is not going to help you improve. 
use those verbal rewards. Second thing you can do is to focus on the practice, not the performance. So reward yourself for the practice, consistent practice, not for the results at the end of the practice. So what I mean by that is reward yourself on a daily basis, for example, during the five day challenge for showing up in painting. So reward yourself for painting, not for producing the next Mona Lisa. So give yourself a pat on the back, do something nice to yourself, reward yourself in some way for consistent practice. Studies have shown over and over again, not just in art, but in sports and every other area of achievement, that if you reward yourself for consistent practice, rather than the end results, you will get better faster. So it's that positive feedback loop again, and it builds on itself and spirals. So for each day of the five day challenge, reward yourself for showing up and doing the work. Don't criticize yourself for the end results. Third thing is to match the reward to the routine. So that was what I was referring to earlier about something you really wanted to have that would help you with the practice of the routine that you're working on. So the reward for showing up for daily painting might be that new tube of paint. It might be a new painting knife. It might be a new brush. It might be a new sketchbook. It might be uh, some new panels. Anything that will help you make that routine that you're trying to ingrain in yourself easier. So match the reward to the routine. And in particular, it's really helpful if you can make it be something that's going to make that routine easier. Don't just wait till the very end to reward yourself. Reward yourself in small ways along the way. It might be, if you're looking for something that's not going to cost anything, my reward for painting today is to go down to a gallery and look at an art exhibition that I've been meaning to go see. My reward for painting today might be going to the museum. My reward today might be going to listen to a YouTube um, discussion by one of my favorite artists. Reward yourself with small things along the way. You're much more likely to have that consistent practice happen. Having a big reward at the end is helpful too, but having those smaller rewards along the way are even more important, really, really important. To that end, you want to think about the practice, not the long-term goal. As animals who function with animal brain and lizard brain, as well as that human rational brain, we work best taking those small steps we get overwhelmed by the big steps. So in trying to achieve something bigger, like the consistent daily painting practice, if you keep telling yourself you've got to paint every day for the next 365 days, you're going to choke and you're going to procrastinate. You're going to come up with all kinds of reasons not to do it. But if you think about today I get to paint and when I finish painting, I'm going to go take a walk, or I'm going to go to a gallery, or I'm going to go watch a YouTube video, much more likely to do it. So think about those small steps that you take, adding up over time to something much larger. But don't each morning focus on what that huge big goal is. It'll stop you dead in your tracks. If you would like to join us in the Daily Painting Challenge over in Artwork Living, it is not too late. We're on day four for those who started on the 18th, but the challenge is running all the way to the end of the month. So if you would like to join the challenge now, you can join the challenge today and get the daily prompt starting on day one, going through day five. So not too late at all. Hop on over and dive in. Once you sign up, you get an invitation and you can go and join the Artwork Living Group. You'll get the first daily prompt and you can post your results either in Artwork Living, which is a private Facebook group. So if you don't want to share what you're working on with the rest of the world and you want a supportive, nurturing community to post those paintings in and get some feedback on them, that's the place to go. It is a very community-oriented group. So Everybody is very helpful. If you don't want any feedback, just put that in the comments and nobody's going to bother you. 
if you want to share your work with the world and you're not worried about working in private, if you're part of the challenge, you can post your daily paintings over on my website with a link back to your own blog or website. If you don't have a website, but you still want it to be public, you can post your painting in the comments on that day's page and it'll show up just like the ones that are in the grid. It won't be in the grid, it'll be down below, but it'll still be on that page. The app that runs the grid only allows us to insert um, images that have a, a link associated with them. It's just the way the app runs, but everybody can participate in the comments if you don't have a website yet. So the web address for joining the Artwork Living 5-Day Painting Challenge is right up above. Click on that and dive on in and join us over there. I'm going to take about 10 minutes of questions right now. So if you've got a question that you were just dying to ask, pop it into the comments below. And I'm going to scroll down and go through those roughly in the order they came in. Sometimes Facebook does not cooperate with sharing those in the correct order. Most of the time it does. So if I accidentally skip your question, know that I'm going to come back through and look for those. CJ says, I hope everyone realizes this is great advice for everything in life. Thank you, CJ. It, it, it is. It really does apply to everything. Um, when I started doing daily paintings, it changed not just my painting practice, but everything else. So small bites to big goals. Works beautifully. I totally agree. Terry says, any day I get to paint is a good special day. Life is busy. Absolutely, but with daily painting, you can if you can carve out an hour to plan your painting, mix your paint, and then a 20 to 30 minute painting. It's not a highly finished painting or a big painting, but it's something small that's a study. That is very satisfying to the inner artist. So it satisfies the craving to make art. It also satisfies the need to make progress in your painting. Doing something small every day in a very limited small block of time can make a huge, huge difference. If you're not sure about that, hop on over to Artwork Living, join in and take a look at what everybody else has done and you'll see what I mean. Jeffrey says, wait a minute, I was painting and oh, that scrolled away. Facebook's doing its thing again. Um, he says, I used recycled surfboard paint. Must have painted 5,000 boards. And I'm going to have to make Facebook let me see all of those comments. Hold on just a second. It is giving me rolling scrolling comments, which are almost impossible to catch. So hopefully if I go over this way, I can get all of the comments. There we go. Um, so, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to go down to the very beginning. Susan says, yeah, it is through the end of the month. Yes, absolutely it is. So you can keep on posting and use the hashtag, hashtag artwork living challenge if you post to Instagram or Twitter. And if you post it to your own Facebook page, use that challenge um, hashtag so that I can keep up with what everybody is doing off of the artwork living page. So that would be great. Donna says, I love to paint, so it's never a problem for me to be motivated. That is the way to go. But part of that, Donna, comes from the fact that you, somewhere back here, um, created that habit. And uh, for all of those of you who already have the daily painting habit, I think it would be wonderful to share just a nugget down here in the comments about what really got you going on that. Because there are a lot of people who don't have that habit yet who I think would benefit from your experience. So just drop a comment down below on one of the things that made it really easy for you to get into the habit of working every day. Um, hey Robin and everyone else. Hey Emily. Um, glad to have you here today too. Jeffrey says, I surround myself with all of my work. It's a selfish reward. I feel soul rich. I think that's actually really, really helpful, Jeffrey. If you can put out in your studio, it's one of the advantages of having a dedicated space, work that you think is successful and work you want to work on, you know, things that have some issues in it, your subconscious mind absorbs all of that while you're doing other stuff. So it's really helpful to have your work out while you're working. 
Um, and I love, like Donna says, I love that phrase, soul rich. That is a fabulous connection of two words. I think having any kind of daily practice, whether it's yoga, um, meditation, painting, horseback riding, exercise of any sort, all of those things enrich your life and make you soul rich. That is going to be my new favorite comment. And let's see. I am glad, that Mary, Marie Carmen, that this is helping you. Great. And Cynthia says, I love this. A few months ago, I moved my easel from a back room to my dining room. Although I'm not crazy about the clutter in there now, I walk through there multiple times a day and find myself painting more and more. The joy overrides the clutter. I totally get that. When that's going to that idea of making it easy to paint, so if it's set up and it's available and it's where you can reach it, then um, when you have a small block of time to work, you're much more likely to do it. Great practice. Um, San Diego? Oh, cool, Jeffrey. Is that where you are? Yeah, I am planning on coming to California sometime this year. So, I'll give y'all a heads up when I do that. And Mary Lou says, focus on the practice. Yeah, we all need to remind ourselves of that. I mean, maybe print that out on one piece of paper and stick that up above the doorway in your studio. I think it helps. We're way too judgmental with ourselves. And we need to all leave judgment at the door when we walk in the studio. Judgment in the sense of negative judgment, negative feedback loops. You have to use a certain amount of judgment. But that judgment needs to come from your gut, not from your head. All too often, we let that, um, I should have, I would have, I could have, take place instead of the intuitive response that comes directly from visual and emotional input rather than logical input. We overthink things way, way, way too much. Hey, Diane. She says, I've been treating myself as being part of your group, learning so much every day. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Laura says, thank you for that. I've had negative teachers. Uh, we all have. Um, we've all experienced that teacher who comes in and says, well, that looks like fill in the blank. Um, that doesn't really improve anything, no matter what it is that you're trying to learn. So get away from people like that. You want feedback, but you want feedback that creates that positive feedback loop, not the negative feedback loop. If you find yourself in a situation where somebody is reinforcing a negative feedback loop, get out, get out now. Um, that happens all too often, especially in the arts, where ego can be involved, um, and it does not help people improve. It doesn't matter whether you want to paint just for yourself, which is perfectly valid, or you want to paint for a local audience, regional audience, or national audience. Whatever your goals are with painting, a positive feedback loop is going to help. The negative feedback loop will hinder. So get around people who reinforce the good positive feedback rather than the negative. And Jan says, oh, thank you, Jan. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Jeffrey says, I lose paintings. They're stacked against each other. <laughs> yeah, I used to be that way. My assistant, hey, Stephanie. Um, said that Stephanie is my assistant. Before she moved to Atlanta, she finished organizing my studio. So I don't have stacks of things, well, not that many stacks of things, <laughs> um, around the studio anymore. So it's much, much more organized than it used to be and tidy. So bring somebody in to help you organize it, Jeffrey. It really does help. He says, I reward myself by surfing after my work is done. That's a great reward. It's also one of those things that's like a parallel training that really, really helps. One of the things that's helped my paintings the most besides daily painting is horseback riding. So whatever reinforces that same kind of positive feedback loop, there'll be bleed off and you'll be surprised about the connections between the two can definitely see connections between surfing and painting. Donna says, one gets more with positivity, works the same with my dog training. Absolutely. Like I say so often, I've trained horses, dogs, and people, and the same thing works for all three. Nobody likes to be verbally or physically beaten. Nobody likes to be um, taken down in public, and everybody 
all creatures respond to positive feedback. CJ says, everything I do, I pay attention to what's going wrong, so I need to learn to change it. Yeah, you just have to start small. Try starting by telling yourself at the end of each painting session, score or high five. It sounds really trite, but it does help. Um, maybe even pick out a victory song on your playlist that you're going to play at the end of each painting session that kind of ends it on a high note literally so that you have that reinforcement going on in your brain. Yes, Sarah, new canvases and panels are always a great reward. So, yeah, reward yourself and watch the movie. <laughs> Maudie, <laughs> that's a good one, Donna. There's some great movies out there. Um, let's see if I got, have any others here. Yeah, getting to paint is always a special day. Um, well, here's the one I lost before. Jeffrey says, I used recycled surfboard paint. Must have painted 5,000 boards. Always different subject matter. I earn while I learn. That is a great way to go. I know a number of people who paint on surfboards. Um, so that is a great pursuit. I also know people who paint with enamel. And I'm guessing that the surfboard paint is some kind of enamel. Enamel is a really, really permanent kind of paint. It's real tough. So that's going to be around a long, long time. A friend of mine's husband paints with enamel on wood panels, and his painting's going to last forever. The thing you want to watch out for when you're working with enamels like that, if you're working on panels for paintings that want to last longer than a surfboard, um, is that the pigments that are in there are light safe. So, yeah, all of that can, can really work. Let's see. Annie says, I paint in watercolor. Can I do the challenge in watercolor? Absolutely. There are no limitations on media for the challenge. So you can do oils, you can do acrylics, you can do watercolor, you can do pastels, you can do colored pencil, you can do just drawing. I'm, it's The idea is to do something every day and to begin to get a little faster at it. So any medium you want to work in, that's fine. Doesn't have to be any particular subject matter either. We've got people who are doing landscapes. We've got people who are doing still lives. People who are doing abstracts. It's completely up to you. So there's no limitation on that. Sue says, how can these exercises carry over into larger, more finished pieces? I'm not sure how to implement this other than the speed factor. Well, it does in several ways. One, if you learn how to create that 20 to 30 minute painting and do a study really quickly, that study is this essence, in essence equivalent to the block-in part of the painting process. So when you get quicker doing a block-in, your marks are going to be fresher, you're going to have more interesting textures and surfaces, and your entire painting process is going to speed up. You'll have a whole lot easier time simplifying and uh, making more um, coordinated structured decisions about how you're building the painting. So it will definitely help in working a la prima, where you work from big shapes to small shapes. So I think that's the main way it carries over. Karen says, to reward myself, I thought that I would buy some convenience colors to make mixing faster. Absolutely. I think that's a great way, Karen, to reward yourself. Where do you put those on your double primary palette. Um, I tend to lay my paint out. I have a palette out. It's not full, so I'm not going to pull it up. But I tend to lay my paint out with the double primary colors, starting with the, the dark ones at the top. So it goes, and part of it is because that way I don't dip my hands into it, which I have a tendency to do. So it goes from the corner where it's phthalo blue, ultramarine blue. I'll, one of my convenience colors at times I'll use is French ultramarine blue, and then dioxazine violet or indigo, I mean, huh, Egyptian violet, getting tongue-tied, Egyptian violet. So those dark ones are up at the top. Then down below, I'll go from the crimson to the 
Fanchon Red or Natfall Red to Indian Yellow and Yellow Ochre. So, cools up here, warms down here. That's just the way I lay it out, and if I have other convenience colors in there, I'll plug them in where they fit, but I also use a lot of Italian Terra Verde, and it goes at the bottom because I know where I'm going to put those mixtures. So they kind of fill in along that main track, and when I'm mixing individual mixtures as I mix the paint. I'll try to post a picture of one of the palettes that I've done that's all laid out. Um, not sure it's going to make a whole lot of sense, but it might help a little bit. Um, next one is, I think a few more questions. Renee says, thank you for your videos. Is it okay to ask a technique question? Sure. You said you do not use solvent. How do you thin your paint? It's hard for me making this change from solvent to no solvent in daily quick paintings. I don't thin my paint. So I'm painting with knives and one up. So when I'm painting with palette knives like this, I don't need thin paint. In fact, I want thicker paint. So for my daily paintings, I don't use the brush. I just use knives. So even then, if I want to use a brush, I'm not going to thin the paint because you can actually, when you're working a la prima, um, have a lot easier time if you're not thinning it too much. If I do thin the paint, then I thin it with a little bit of linseed oil or uh, Gamblin's uh, solvent-free medium. So either Gamblin's solvent-free medium or a little bit of linseed oil. But there's no need for the solvent. So you want to try and remove that from what you're working on. And also try not to thin the paint out, oil paint out, so that it's a wash. That's not a real good practice. Jeffrey says, what is the group we can share our work on? Um, the free Facebook group is Art Plus Work Plus Living. And I'll post that up at the top as well. But if you join the challenge, you get the link to that automatically. You don't have to be in the challenge to be in Art Work Living. That group goes on all the time. But it's the place where during the challenge, we're sharing images internally so that nobody else in the world can see it. But I'll stick that up in the um, description, Jeffrey, when we finish up. Laura says, what can I do with all these studies? Turn them into bigger paintings. So take them as the groundwork or the basis for larger paintings. Almost always when I do bigger paintings, um, and I've got paintings in here that go from four and a half feet by six feet, four by six feet, three by three feet, two by two feet. I like really big. When I'm going to work on a big one, that's a lot of investment in time and money and uh, materials because a big canvas or a big panel costs a lot of money. I don't want to just dive in there and maybe let it free flow and make a hot mess. So what I do is I always paint studies before I do the big one. So take that small study where you've worked out the composition and the value relationships and the color relationships and use that as a plan for the bigger one. So that's what I would do with all those small studies. There are several other things that you can do with small daily paintings. I sell mine. So the more you do them, the more complete as a painting they'll become. You can think of them as studies or you can think of them as finished paintings. The early ones will probably not read as finished paintings, although a lot of them that I've seen inside the Facebook group would. You can use those as studies for future paintings, but if you get faster and you get stronger as a painter, you can start uh, selling those small daily paintings on a site like Daily Paintworks. Lots of people do that. So that's the value of doing that. It's not only the practice you get, but that it helps planning for future works. If you're having trouble seeing the video, then one of the things you want to do is log off and log back in. Make sure that you're close to your Wi-Fi resource. That will help. Um, Emily says, can I join the page even if I don't paint regularly? Of course you can. Absolutely. Artwork Living is a, an open page. It's a closed Facebook group, but it's open to anybody who wants to paint or make art. 
You don't have to be painting all the time to be in there. And in fact, Emily, Emily is one of my former students. In fact, Emily, there are other people you know in there. I think Marina's in there. Um, Marina, correct me if I'm wrong, because I think you may be on right now, too. She's been on earlier. Um, but there are people you already know in there, so absolutely hop on. Dr. Tootin is in there, too. So you'll see familiar faces. Hop on in. As Jan says, painting is my meditation. I think it becomes that for a lot of people, Jan. And Joan says, I think you have to paint what you're really interested in. Figures for me. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Don't try to paint things that you're not interested in. It really will not work. So pick subjects that you're familiar with. Pick subjects you have a feeling about. And work from there. And the paintings will be much stronger. CJ says, art is so therapeutic. After a trauma, I started back at my art. And it slowed my heart rate and stopped the crazy mind chatter. I fall into a deep theta brain meditative state. That is absolutely true. And what's happening is you are falling into flow. Flow state is a meditative state where we lose track of time and we our right brain totally takes over. That is one of the things that we want to have happen when we're painting. We're better painters when we do that. We don't have to think about what to do next. Our intuitive mind takes over and our habits take over. And we're able to paint without having to make minute decisions all the time. So you're in a really good spot, CJ. Art can absolutely be thera uh, therapeutic. So art as therapy can be your goal. Art as expression can be your goal. And art as livelihood can be your goal. All three of those things can be your goals. They're not mutually exclusive at all. Marie Carmen says, I've lined up my three paintings and I feel very happy. That's my reward. That is a great reward. Yeah, I think that is a really good one because it creates that positive feedback loop. A, you've got three paintings. And then you can look at what's working well in each one of those. Terry says, my marriage and my painting is what I have stuck with 45 years. Kudos. And yes, I do paint almost every day. That is fabulous. Laura says, I paint slowly in thin layers and wanted to do this to push myself. That's um, painting in layers is a whole different process than painting a la prima, but they do benefit each other and reinforce each other. And I've done both. So painting in layers, uh, if you start out with a painting that's very quick and a la prima, and then add subsequent layers to it. You can get a super, super rich painting. That is what Rembrandt did. When you look at a Rembrandt in real life, you can see just how loose and how quick his initial painting was. It, they used predominantly monochromatic underpaintings and then glazed in thin layers on top. So if you can get quick in that initial layer, you're going to get really, really rich paintings when you then build up the layers. Um, if the video is stuck for you, that means that you just need to refresh. It's live. We're really live. I'm still here. It's 1136 and I'm still here. Donna says, in order to paint on a daily basis, I had to give up a few things that I did not miss. Absolutely. Yeah, it helps to narrow down your life to what's most important. So I have time for about one or two more questions. Um, Margaret says, tip for working daily. Ideally is to have a dedicated space. Absolutely so. That makes it easy to work. And, oh yeah, she's giving herself food at the end too. That's a great idea wherever she goes. I love that idea. Um, if you, uh, oh, Didem is asking, how can we access your other Facebook Live videos from earlier this week? If you go to the Videos tab on my Facebook page, you will see all of the videos from this week. And they're in order. Facebook automatically records them and puts them there in order. So they're there on my Facebook page. And I'll make a post after this that has links to all of them. I'll put it in here and over in Artwork Living. So, thank y'all for joining me here today. That's all the questions I have time for at the moment. I know there are a bunch of others in there, so I will scroll back through later this afternoon and answer some of those. Bye-bye for now. Happy painting, everyone.